You know, one of the great things about doing three hours of television every weekday is it gives us the chance from time to time to revisit subjects and topics that we really need more information about. So it is with a brand new book that is out entitled The Rule of Nobody by Philip K. Howard. Philip, we thank you for being with us two days in a row. How nice to be with you. Now, Philip, The Rule of Nobody, a provocative title. Two decades ago, you wrote uh, uh, The Death of Common Sense. Explain to us briefly what you mean by the title, The Rule of Nobody. Um, we've created a democracy now where, where no one has authority to make any important choice, that all the choices are kind of embedded in legal concrete. It's kind of piled up decade after decade so that uh, the budgets are basically preset, uh, including huge deficits. Uh, no one has authority, say, to approve new power lines or new infrastructure, so processes go on for a decade or longer. Um, we can't, the, the society is paralyzed because no one can make a decision. Is it just an impulse of man to try to overregulate his behavior or that of his fellow man? Yeah, it is actually. I mean, there's a. There's, I think Hume once said there's this horrible tendency of humans to try to write rules to tell everybody else what to do. And so um, there's, there's a, a distrust by the liberals of conservatives and conservatives of liberals and everyone, everyone else. And we've tried to solve it by writing um, rules. And, um, and there's, there's no social activity that doesn't have that isn't bogged down in this sort of legal swamp. I mean, America now ranks 20th in the world in ease of starting a business. This is supposed to be the land of the free. Philip K. Howard, our guest, his new book, The Rule of Nobody. Philip, again, as you mentioned these things, uh, I cannot help but think of my time in Congress. And, and part of what you're talking about, at least based on my experience, was the fact that we would legislate uh, something the president would sign it into law, but then the implementation was left to the bureaucracy and the regulators in a, in a veritable alphabet, alphabet soup of acronyms would be writing regulations that, that, in, that for all intents and purposes carried the weight of laws. So whatever was intended would be further outlined or it, it, in some cases uh, we in Congress would give these regulatory bodies carte blanche to just promulgate new regulations and so you never see the end of it because if someone's in business to regulate what are they going to do write regulations yeah, exactly exactly and and congress not only delegates too much and never goes and sees how they work but it also never sees how its own statutory language works it seems to me that perhaps every piece of legislation needs to carry with it a sunset law that mandates congressional review and if the review is held and it's deemed that things aren't working funding is stopped or if it's deemed that things are working uh, you obviously move ahead, move ahead with it and if Congress does right. not get to that review well then it sunsets it goes out of existence and uh, I heard from so many people I guess it was Lynn Martin who was uh, the, the Secretary of Labor for George Herbert Walker Bush, she used to joke, I don't know what your theological dispensation is. I don't know if you believe in reincarnation, but if you do, you want to come back as a federally funded program because that's the closest thing you can find on this earth to eternal life. We just yeah. don't get rid of the things once they're started. It's, a, it's an incredibly important, uh, uh, it's an incredibly important point. And so uh, at this point, democracy is really run by dead people. It's all the people who wrote all these programs and laws and regulations that are long gone, and yet they dictate how everything works, including day-to-day including -day choices. So I have a proposed Bill of Responsibilities, of uh, five constitutional amendments, the first one of which is sunset laws. Um, and uh, another one has to do with the power of the president to hire and fire people so that he can actually manage the executive branch today, the civil service system, as you know, is completely unmanageable. I mean, it's called the merit system. It's really the anti-merit system. So 
uh, but, but but we're at a point now where you can't actually just come in and kind of tweak this. You really need – we're at one of these periods like the 1960s where we need to kind of fundamentally rethink how we're running our society and do a radical spring cleaning. It's fascinating that you have five proposed amendments that you're calling really the, the bill of responsibilities. You touched on one of them, the sunset laws. In, in the two and a half minutes that remain, could you outline the others or at least whet sure. our appetite as to why we need to pick up your book about this? Oh, oh, sure, uh, completely. Uh, well, we need to give each branch of government back its back its uh, both its responsibility and its power. So Congress should have the authority, without presidential signature, to undo any regulation by the executive branch. Majority vote of Congress. If it thinks these regulations that have been, you know, written by bureaucrats don't make any sense, they should have the authority to to remove it. They don't have that authority today. Secondly, the, the, the president needs to have the authority to manage the uh, executive branch, including things like not spending monies where to do so would clearly be a waste of money, as well as to manage employees, as I just mentioned, so we can hire and fire um, uh, civil servants. So that uh, courts need to have the obligation before any claim moves forward, either a public claim or a private claim, to have, make a legal ruling about whether this claim is consistent with law. So giving courts the authority to actually act as gatekeepers and say, no, we're not going to allow abusive lawsuits. And then the final uh, amendment is, uh, is a George Kennan idea to, to create a new branch of government that has no power. It would be basically a council of elders. Oh, now that's and an its interesting job, thought. It, it, its job would be to comment on how the other branches are doing. Well, it, <laughs> I don't mean to be irreverent about that, but in my mind's eye, I can hear the criticism, criticism saying it sets up a heckling class. I know that's not your intent. Uh, let me say this well, to you, and I, and I mean this, I mean this in, in all sincerity. Uh, 20 years ago, the death of common sense. You are proving, sir, that you have common sense in great abundance. I look forward to reading The Rule of Nobody. We're up against the clock once again. We look forward to having you back, Philip Howard. And uh, you have put forth some intriguing ideas with your proposal of the Bill of Responsibilities. What about that? What do you think of it? We'd love to hear from you. You can get with us via social media. Stay with us. There's more to come.